All right. Hey, good morning to you. It's Monday, brand new week. I, I think for most of you, if you got kids, uh, they're heading to school. Uh, they, some, some went last week, in our neck of the woods anyway. Some went last week, maybe last Thursday. Uh, bulk starts today. And so I don't know what's going on in your area, but um, man, life, uh, life moves on. So to me, this is one of those calendar flipping pages. Um, you know, you had a first grader last year, now you got a second grader, right? Or however that is, or now you got one going to kindergarten, or, or now maybe this is the first year that you haven't had any kids going to school. So you're at that realm. Um, but man, it's um, it, it comes at us, doesn't it? And so uh, enjoy the time you got. And uh, let's just let's just do that, right? Uh, so I hope you had a great weekend. We uh, man, we we had we stayed home. It was fun. We just packed it full of of uh, some good fun things, and then some sporadic. Uh, I think I had a nap or two, which was nice. I always love naps. I don't get them very often, but uh, you know we did that. And so just a great weekend, uh, just being together. Church yesterday was amazing. Uh, yesterday, just she and I went out to dinner. It was fun again doing that and. Um, did a little shopping, found some Adirondack chairs, um, so we were looking for those, found, found them at a little discount outlet place, which was uh, cheap, and so it was a good score for us. Anyway, I had a good weekend, and uh, so I hope you do too. And let's let's get our attention back to the Book of Romans. We're going to see some truth there today. Let's go ahead and jump into some truth and see what we can find. Uh, we are in, in uh, Romans chapter 8, and uh, we're talking about killing sin today, and and this is the power, and I want us to see this. Uh, I'm really only going to look at two verses, 12 and 13, but I'm going to get that running start through the chapter just so we can uh, get a really good feel for, for what's going on. Uh, chapter 8, verse 1, probably one of the greatest passages of scriptures uh, are verses in all of the scriptures because it's that constant reminder, the difference between being a believer in Christ and a non-believer. For you and me who are believers in Christ, therefore there is now no condemnation at all for those who are in Christ Jesus. Man, that is good news. Listen, we are free. There's no condemnation. There's no. I'm not. I'm not worried about this mammoth uh, uh, um, reservoir of anger that is that is being stored up and will be unleashed. God's holy, righteous anger. I'm, I'm not bothered by that. You're not bothered by that. It's not going to hit us. We're not in. We're not in the floodplain there. We've been. We've been moved out. We've been taken out of that miry muck. We've, our feet have been set on solid ground. I have no worries when that when that torrent is unleashed, when those dams are burst open, and that anger of wrath of God pours forth His holy anger. Um, you and me were spared from it. Uh, we're on high ground, and uh, man, that's good. So, so this is where we start off, right? And so he just reminds us that you and I have been set free. That's what he says in verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. I, death and sin no longer have a hold on me. Death is, is no longer an issue that we even think of. At this point, it's no longer death. We've substituted death for sleep in in, in a sense. Um, but but that that's only that's only like quickly right i mean we're we're raised again to new life so should this body lay in the ground my spirit is alive and well it's just my body that sleeps but it doesn't die and so it's powerful it will one day uh, that body will come out of the ground in i mean corruptible and it will transform into incorruptibility uh, as it makes its way to heaven so crazy stuff that takes place that's the truth we find in the scriptures and then, uh, and then uh, because of that, the, the law has been fulfilled in my life, verse 4, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And so we find there that, uh, that the law no longer works in me because I've died to that. The law is only to those who are alive, just like a marriage, remember? I died to that, therefore the law is, is been completed, it's been done, it's null and void. Uh, and so, so there you have it. And then verse five to 11, we look at what it looks like to have a changed nature. Uh, he says, for those who are in accord with the flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who are in accord with the spirit, the things of the spirit for the mind set on flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God. For it does not subject itself to the law of God. For it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please 
God. My whole nature's been changed, right? I've been transformed. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have been made new. I was a caterpillar. I'm a butterfly now. Completely different. Not even the same in that sense. It's just metamorphosized into something completely different. That's you and me in Christ. It's important that we that we see that. He says this in verse 9. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of Christ dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. You can't be a believer if you don't have the Spirit of Christ. When you repented of your sins, when you, when you acknowledged that Christ was Lord of your life, when you submitted to that, you became a child of God. Behold, all things pass away. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. The Spirit of God being one of those new things. It is he and the power within you that, that, that is at work now. It says, verse 10, if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, to the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. So I'm a changed nature, not just now, but it, but my mortal body is eventually going to change too into that which is incorruptible. My spirit already has. My body will catch up at death. But this is this is where we find ourselves. So now we come to chapter twelve. I mean, uh, chapter eight, verse twelve and thirteen. The two verses we're going to look at today. So then, brothers and sisters, we are not under obligation. Not uh, we are under obligation not to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if you live by the Spirit, you're putting to death the deeds of the body you will live. What's he saying there? Killing sin. That's our goal, right? I'm not living. I'm, I'm under no obligation to fulfill the the, the, the sin anymore. I'm no. I'm, the sin no longer has mastery over me. That part is gone. I'm a free man. I'm I'm able to get off the plantation in that sense and walk in newness of life as a free man, right? That's where I am. And he says, if you are living in according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit you're putting to death the deeds of the body, that sin, you will live. So this is the difference. This is what it is. Now, let's have a conversation about this. I want to kind of journey through some other scriptures to get us to a really good and healthy place, I think. But that sets us up to what it is. What's he, I'm going to read it one more time. So then, you and me, we are under obligation not to live according to the flesh. I don't have to live by sin. I don't have to live by flesh. Uh, but, to, uh, uh, but, but if you are living in accord with the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit we are putting to death the deeds of the body, we will, we will live. The Spirit of Christ is in us. We have power within us. We can choose not to sin. Theoretically, it is possible to live sin-free. Don't let that freak you out. I'm not talking about sinless perfection. I'm simply telling you that that's the same thing John said in 1 John. I write these things to you, my children, that you do not sin. Right? Let that sink in. What's he saying? Hey, I'm writing to you because I don't want you to sin. Right? This is, but, and we would think, well, pfft, man, that's who we are. No, it's not who we are. Right? That part of us is dead. The Spirit of Christ has brought life. And we're still going to struggle, right? Because we're in this mortal body and the flesh is still there. But the sin principle, we should not sin in any uh, any like parallel to that which the world does. Our sin should be diminished, being diminished, being killed off. Uh, and, and this is what's going on. Let's just talk a little bit about that. Uh, why, why can I do this? Why can I live with the goal of being sin free? Because of the power of the Spirit of Christ in me, right? That's why. No good thing is in my flesh. Those of flesh do fleshly things, but I'm not. The Spirit has power within me. We know this from the Scriptures, so let's just listen to these. Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power when? When the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses, right? There's a Holy Spirit power that came on us when we chose to follow Christ. Acts 10.38 says that Jesus was anointed with Holy Spirit power. The works that Jesus did when he was on this earthly life, he did in the power of the Spirit. So understand this. There's there's power there. Power for things beyond you and me can comprehend. The, the same, it was true in the Old Testament too. When the power came on Samson, man, he had strength that would defy any man. Elijah was able to call down fire, uh, fire uh, to those altars because of 
of the power of the spirit that rested in him. King David was able to win the battles that he did because of the power that was within him. Zechariah the prophet said, don't think it's by your power or your might. It is always by my spirit, says the Lord. That's Zechariah, right? Uh, Romans 8, 4, the same power, we looked at this uh, last week, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive in you. Listen, the spirit of Christ can take a dead man's body and raise it to life. You don't think that he can take your body that is that where the flesh has been killed and raise it to new life? Absolutely, it can be done. And this is what it looks like. This is how it's done. If we go to Galatians um, uh, well, I got another verse here. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. What's he saying there, man? He's telling me that. I, listen, I don't, I don't defeat sin the same way I defeat something else and just grit it out. No, man, I, I just reckon it dead, and I, I listen to the spirit. My, what, what, how do I fight the way the world fights? No, my, my, I don't fight like that. Uh, but but my weapons of warfare, not, they're not of the flesh. What are they then of? They're of the power of the Spirit of Christ. And what is the power of the Spirit able to do? To, to tear down divine strongholds, right? So you say, man, I've got an addiction. I just can't do it. I can't overcome it. Oh, yes, if you're a Christ follower, yes, you can. You're just appropriating the wrong thing. You let the power of the Spirit of Christ in you can can cure you from that, uh, from, from that addiction. You say, man, I, I'm just so anxious. I, I, got, I got to take medication. And I got I to take these things. I just can't live without it. Oh, yes, you can. There's a different warfare that we fight. We're not, we don't need, I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm not saying we don't need medication. I'm just simply saying anxiety, the power of the spirit can work in the mind and the emotion and cure that in an instant. You simply have to believe you can. Most of you don't. That's why you struggle with what you do. Most of us don't think we can get rid of addiction. That's why we struggle with those things that we do. But we are looking at Scripture, and we are going to be strong in the faith in this and realize that, yes, we can. We can kill sin. I can kill anxiety. I can kill fear. I can kill uh, addictions. I can kill lust. I can kill anger. I can kill bitterness. All of that can be put to death, not by my strength, not by my might, but by the power of the Spirit of God. Now you say, well, how does that happen? Where do we unleash it? Well, first thing you need to know is the power of God is in you, right? It's not out there somewhere. It's in you. The spirit of the living Christ is in you. He has taken up residence in your life. He is, if you will, beginning the clean house. He's going to walk about the, the, the rooms of your heart, and he's going to begin to see what is there that doesn't need to be there, and he's going to do some renovation of your heart. That's what he's doing. Let him do it. Quit fighting him on it. Quit hiding stuff so that he can't find it. Like stuff everything in the closet, right? Quit doing that. Quit saying, no, 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 but I really need this. It means a lot to me. It has no value in your place. So when you're holding on to some sin because it, it, it the anger kind of, you feel better when you have it. He's like, mm, we need to throw that away. That's going to go. We're renovating here. That can't stay. This is what's going on. First, you need to recognize that within you is the power of the spirit. Now, listen to what happens in that. Galatians chapter 5. But I say to you, walk in the Spirit. So what does that mean? Okay, there are powers there. So what has to happen? Follow the Spirit. Quit trying to convince the Spirit to follow you. You follow it. Because where's He leading you? Where's the Holy Spirit? Where's He leading you? He's leading you to holiness. He's leading you onward and upward. That's where He's going. Follow Him. Listen to what it says. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you won't carry out the desires of the flesh. What's He saying there? You won't carry out that anxiety. You won't carry out that that those uh, uh, addictions. You won't carry out that anger. You won't carry out that bitterness. You won't carry out that lust. You won't carry out the coveting, the jealousy. You won't carry out those things. Why? Because it's not a part of the spirit. Man, we're going somewhere different. For the desire of the flesh is against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, in order to keep you from doing whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are sexual immorality, impurity, indecent behavior, idolatry, witchcraft, hostilities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't let those things reign in your life. If it is, you just demonstrate that you really don't have the Spirit of Christ in you and you really aren't a child of God. Because no one who, who, who who's born of God 
practices sin they cannot for God's seed, the Spirit of Christ, is in them. So what are we doing? Well, one, recognize that the power of the Spirit is in you. Secondly, begin to follow that, right? Just begin to follow the Spirit. Follow His lead. You know your conscience is now heightened. And you know you're, when you're angry that it's wrong. You've forgotten it, maybe. But you know deep down in your knower that it's wrong. So listen to that conscience, right? This is, this is what he says. This is what goes on. Then he says this. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, but the fruit of the Spirit. So, but if, but if, I'm, if I'm following the Spirit, what's going to happen? Man, I'm going to be full of love. See, you, you, you can't be angry and loving at the same time. You can't. I'm going to be full of love. I'm going to be full of joy. You can't, you, can't have, you can't have covetous thoughts when you're joyful. You can't be jealous when you're joyful. Peace. And you, you're not going to be bitter and stir up strife. You're not going to let anxiety get in there because you have peace, right? This is the fruit of the Spirit. This is what we're looking for. So how do we get it? We follow Him. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You compare those against that list of sins and you will see that every one of those attitudes will, will uh, demolish all of those sins. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let's follow the Spirit as well. Let's not become boastful, challenging one another, envying one another. Do you have any of those sins that we just listed? Are they in your life? Look, go back and look at that list in Galatians chapter 5. Look at that list today when we're done here and begin to mark which ones. Rate yourself if you want to on that. You know, on an indie, scale of 1 to 10, where am I? Man, look at that. See which one of those are high. Begin to, begin to let those strongholds come down. Begin to rip those things down. How, how so? Well, one, recognize you have power to do so. You don't need a book. You don't, need, you don't need counseling. You don't need all of that stuff for this. You just recognize that the power that raised Christ from the dead is alive in you, that power. And then you say, I'm going to follow the Spirit. All right, so how do we do that? Well, Ephesians 5.18 says, don't be drunk with wine, where is in dissipation. Right, what he's saying there, it's not about being drunk. He's saying, listen, don't let your mind be controlled by, by anything other than the Spirit. This is our problem. Don't be filled with wine, but uh, which are, are drunk with, with, with wine, which leaves excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's the deal. Let, you, let the Spirit saturate every area of your life. You say, well, I've got the Spirit. You have the presence of the Spirit of Christ, and He's in those rooms, and He's cleaning out. Let Him have His way. Here's how Paul told the Colossian church. He said, let the Word of Christ richly dwell within you. You know what's happening there? When we let the Word of Christ be at home in our life, then we are filled with the Spirit. So what does that mean we need to do? Your problem, my problem is we intake too much garbage. Everybody else says, oh yeah, everybody's angry. Everybody's anxious. Everybody's whatever. And so we begin to believe, well, that's true. Is that what, does the scripture say that? No, it says that about the world, but does it say that about us? No, garbage in, garbage out. You and me spend too much time listening to the worldly stuff, worldly answers, worldly everything. You and me should be more about memorizing scripture, listening to good messages, uh, listening to book, the books of the Bible just read. Just, just, man, I've been walking, listening to just the books of the Bible. It's amazing what happens. That puts his thoughts in you. The Spirit then, his thoughts are in your heart, I mean in your head. It will drift down to your heart, the, the windshield with which you see life. That's those attitudes, and the attitudes will be love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and faithfulness and kindness and gentleness and self-control. The behavior always follows the attitude. Therefore, your behavior will be flowing out of those attitudes. This is how it's done. This is how it's done. I got more to say, uh, but we'll, we'll pick it up uh, tomorrow. Well, I got one more minute. Um, so 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says take every thought captive right in the same one that said uh, we have power to pull down strongholds we have power to take captive the thoughts Don't you, it's about your thoughts as a man thinketh in his heart so is he Israel was granted the promised land weren't they just like you and me we're granted the promised land to have, to have, to have this land of mine completely secure completely uh, kingdom run, right? Kingdom of God is within us. Israel was granted the promised land. And what did they do? They let their thoughts dictate what happened. They saw the good in the land, but they saw the bad too. And what did they focus on? 
They didn't focus on the spirit. They focused on the flesh. They saw they saw that they couldn't compete with those giants and all of that in the land. And so what did they do? They never took it over. They didn't think they could, and so they didn't. They compromised. They made treaties. And now what we do? We compromise. We make treaties with the devil. You know, and we substitute power for that. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna let a little bit of anxiety in there, and I'll just try to medicate it, or I'll try to deal, or everybody does it, right? Instead of trusting in the power of God. That's the problem. You and me have to identify strongholds. And we have to take them down. This is how it's done. I'm learning some great stuff here today. I'm not, I don't want you to think I've, I've got it made. But I'm learning some things here today. And I hope you are too. Lord bless you, man. I can't wait to share more of this with you in the morning. Have a great one.